Hello friends, myself Professor Prashant Mahajan, working as an assistant professor at AISSMS Institute of Information Technology. So we have started Water Technology Unit. Today we are going to see ill effects of hard water on boiler metal. In that we are going to see two ill effects. First, boiler corrosion and second is priming and foaming. So important use of water in industries for steam generation and coolant. Then objective treating boiler with water thoroughly to avoid troubles in boiler. So that can be done by two types of treatment. One is external treatment and other is internal treatment. So what is external treatment? So external treatment means we have to treat the boiler feed water before use in the boiler. So we have to treat that hard water sample outside the boiler. And what is internal treatment? Internal treatment we have to treat the water inside the boiler. So steam is required for thermal power station for uniform and continuous heating of reactor. So that is the requirement of steam. Then that are the in treatments to, sop to soften the hard water. Then there are three types of boilers are given, their steam pressures are given and permitted hardness of water is given. So in low pressure boiler 25 to 50 ppm of CaCO3 hardness is permitted. In medium pressure boiler 10 to 25 ppm of hardness is permitted and in high pressure boiler 0 to 10 ppm of hardness is permitted. If we use the water sample which is having hardness above 50 ppm or 100 ppm then what happens? So if we use hard water in the boiler then ill effects or bad effects on the boiler metals are taking place like boiler corrosion priming and foaming, scale and sludge formation and caustic embrittlement. So water with minimum hardness and maximum purity is good for boiler feed. So first is boiler corrosion. So what is corrosion? So corrosion is nothing but the decay or destruction or disintegration or deterioration of metal by chemical or electrochemical means. So right now we are going to see boiler corrosion. So it is the destruction of boiler metal by chemical or electrochemical attack of the environment. So what is chemical? Chemical means what? That boiler metal is going to react with the chemical or gases present in the atmosphere. Then what is electrochemical? Electrochemical means what? There is a uh, two types of electrode. One is anode, other is cathode and there is a presence of electrolyte. That means in electrochemical corrosion there is a formation of anodic area, cathodic area. So anodic area get oxidized that is also called as corrosion and cathodic area get reduced that is called as protection. So that part we are going to see in the corrosion unit. So first Corrosion due to dissolved gases. In that first gas is dissolved oxygen. So this Fe is nothing but boiler metal. So we are majorly using as Fe as boiler metal. So Fe is a boiler metal in that water is there and oxygen is present in that water that is dissolved oxygen. So that is going to react with the boiler metal and form ferrous hydroxide. If more quantity of oxygen is present in the water, then that ferrous hydroxide is going to be converted into rust. So that is the one reason that is dissolved oxygen. So if we know the reason or cause, then we can make prevention. So the corrosion is due to oxygen present in the water. So we have to remove that oxygen, then corrosion will get reduced or prevented. 
so what we are going to use first we are going to use sodium sulfide so sodium sulfide will react with oxygen and will give sodium sulfate second is sodium sulfide that will react with the oxygen present in the water and it will produce sodium sulfate third one is hydrogen hydrogen will react with the water and form a nitrogen gas so last method that is hydrogen method is most preferable for o2 removal as it is not forming any salt you can see here first two methods are forming salts so that can be removed by filtration but in the third method it is forming gas so the gas form get liberated out so that is first dissolved gases second is dissolved co2 so carbon dioxide it is present in the water by first if water is heated and water is containing temporary hardness like magnesium bicarbonate then it is going to convert into magnesium hydroxide precipitate and two molecules of carbon dioxide this is one way that carbon dioxide is generated in the water and second during the journey of the water from earth sorry clouds to the earth gases like carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide get mixed so carbon dioxide get mixed with water to form carbonic acid and that carbonic acid is reacting with iron metal or boiler metal to produce ferrous carbonate so we know that this is due to carbon dioxide and temporary hardness so we are going to prevent that corrosion by carbon dioxide by adding liquid ammonia or by deaeration so we are going to add ammonium hydroxide and the carbon dioxide present in the water is going to convert into ammonium carbonate so in that way that corrosion get reduced so this is the part 1 dissolved gases in that dissolved oxygen and dissolved co2 next is acid from dissolved salts that is salts of weak base and strong acid so this is the salt magnesium chloride if water is present and in that water magnesium chloride or salt is present on heating that magnesium chloride is going to convert into magnesium hydroxide and two molecules of hydrochloric acid so this hydrochloric acid will react with the boiler metal that is fe and form ferrous chloride and hydrogen gas so this ferrous chloride again reacts with water and giving ferrous hydroxide plus two molecule of hcl so this hcl will again react with this fe metal so this reaction continues again and again because this hcl is going to regenerate so why this corrosion is taking place because this is due to presence of magnesium chloride so we have to remove that magnesium chloride again second this is due to presence of hydrochloric acid so we have to neutralize that hydrochloric acid so how to prevent this corrosion so you can see by using alkaline solution to adjust ph of water in 8.5 to 9 range so we have to maintain the ph of water in the range 8.5 to 9 so that can be prevented second corrosion is happening due to magnesium chloride so to remove that magnesium chloride we have to use zeolite method or ion exchange method that we will see in the coming lecture so that is second prevention method then third galvanic cell so galvanic cell simply as i said there are two electrodes one is anode other is cathode and electrolyte is present then anode get corroded and cathode get protected so that is galvanic cell 
so that we will discuss in the corrosion unit so that is first part boiler corrosion then next is priming and foaming so what is priming priming is the formation of wet steam that is steam containing water droplets so due to violent and vigorous boiling it leads to the formation of wet steam that is steam containing water droplets so you can see in the diagram there is a violent and vigorous boiling it leads to the formation of wet steam so what are the causes first presence of large amount of dissolved salts so if dissolved salts are present then wet steam will form then second high steam velocities and sudden steam demands then third improper boiler design and fourth sudden increase in the steaming rate so that are the four causes that's why priming is taking place and prevention if you know causes then you can prevent the priming so first presence of large amount of dissolved salts that can be prevented by heating mechanical steam purifier and second efficient softening and filtration next due to high levels in the boiler so that is not given here so that can be reduced or prevented by maintaining low level of water in the boilers and next is sudden increase in the steaming rate so that can be reduced by avoiding rapid change in the steaming rate so this is definition of priming causes and prevention so next is foaming so that is you can see the definition so foaming is the formation of persistent foam or bubbles which does not break easily so you can see here there is the formation of persistent foam or bubbles which cannot break easily so the causes of the foaming is presence of substances like oil so which reduces surface tension of water so you know that soap can form bubbles or foam so as we know the causes are oils and soaps so prevention are adding anti foaming chemicals like castor oil and second removing oil impurities by adding compounds like sodium aluminate and blow down operation at appropriate time so that are the prevention method and last disadvantages of priming and foaming so first disadvantage wet steam carries dissolved salts which can get deposited on turbine blades and that can reduce efficiency of the boiler so that is first it can reduce the efficiency of boiler second dissolved salt from wet steam may enter in the part of the machinery that will decrease life of the machinery and third due to that priming and foaming actual height of water column column cannot be judged so maintenance of boiler becomes difficult so that is about priming and priming and foaming so that's it from today's lecture thank you thank you very much